Hello! In this video I'm going to show you how you can take one of these Buck Brothers six and a half inch block planes you can get at Home Depot for just under eleven dollars, cannibalize it for the blade, and instead of using this, which works fine, you can use uh, any wood you have around. Luckily I have a source for exotic hardwoods and you can make a showpiece like this that does a really nice job and looks great hanging on your workbench. I want to apologize uh, to begin with in um, the choppiness of this video because I actually thought this was going to be a fail so I didn't film it while I was making it and now I'm backing up and kind of showing you the steps you would need to use and I hope you can mentally put it together as I'm assembling it for you. Good luck. Here's a project I was inspired to attempt to make from another YouTube, although it was a fail to begin with. Uh, this is a little block plane and um, it's made of some exotic woods and luckily I have a free source for getting those woods. So I was able to put this together for about $11. And if you take a look, I'll give it a rotation here. It's kind of one of those things you might call a vanity tool because it looks probably better than it works. I'll give you a close-up of it. I think the center part is babinga, the sides are walnut, and the knob is maple. And it really does work and I'll show you how I put this together. Outside of needing the blade from the purchased plane, I needed a 3 8 inch bolt and a brass threading insert. I think you can get these at Ace Hardware. There's a source for them on another one of my videos if you check out on making beer tap handles. And an aluminum rod. To give you an idea how this goes together, I basically copied the idea from the purchased plane. The hardest thing was to tighten the blade in some way. So what you do is you cut this at an angle and I'll show you how that's done. And this is where the aluminum rod goes through and there is a gap in there for the shavings to pass through. And um, the blade itself slides down obviously this channel. And then it's really important, you can see with a bandsaw, I cut a notch in there. And when this slides under, the notch fits right there. And then as I begin to tighten this, you can see as I tighten this, this whole structure right here begins to go up. But this metal aluminum rod is working like a fulcrum. And this is the lever. And I'll get to a point where it gets real tight and it's pushing down hard on the blade and it tightens and locks it in. And that's what keeps it in place. So you can see um, this is kind of the way we put it together and it cuts real well. I'll show you that in a little bit. But let's give you an idea how this was put together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the purchase blade, set it down, right here and move my ripping fence up next to it and when it hits that's the exact size of the width of the plane but I'm going to back it off and make it a maybe a sixteenth of an inch wider so there's a little play in there and I have some room for air and for sanding. Lock in my fence. I have a this is a scrap block of maple and this is one and three quarter thick. You might have to glue up to get a piece like that. And when you get this, I'm not going to do this manually right now, but you can see I'm going to send it through and rip this piece and get something like this, but a little bit longer. And that's what we're going to use for the body of the plane. So you can see the body of the planer is seven and three quarter inch long. And we have to take that block. Here I have a smaller one I'm going to use just for demonstration purposes. But that seven and three quarter inch piece, we're going to have to cut some angles out here. Some guy on the internet said uh, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. That didn't work at all. So what I did is I went back to the plane that I had scavenged 
and I just copied the angle that the blade sat in this one and makes sense because they did research and development on this one so I just copied the same angle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the block and you can see I just kind of faked it here but I have a profile like that of course it's going to be seven and three quarter and you're going to take that block and you're going to cut this outside profile and then you're going to cut it at diagonals. 45 is probably okay here and this other angle you're going to cut it at a much deeper slope probably 30 degrees when you get done and I'll show you how I set that up on the bandsaw. So now I'm taking my homemade miter guide and placing it at approximately 30 degrees. You check with the angle of the plane you surface uh, you purchase and then I'm going to put a extra block here to give the distance that I need and I'm going to set up the block of wood to make that cut right here. When I go ahead to make the cut, I have to be real careful with this hold, but I'm going to lock it in with these fingers and I'm going to take it right through and make a diagonal cut coming right through here at about 30 degrees. I then took my bandsaw and took a three quarter inch thick piece of uh, maple by one and three quarter and then I ran it through my bandsaw and split it. Now I'm not splitting this one but you get the idea I'm coming through and splitting it and I'm going to get my two side pieces out of this. So if you have a long enough piece you can make it out of one and the bad bandsaw cut here will go on the outside of your planer because then you can sand it. So if you can picture this now we have taken our block and we've cut the profile and we've cut the two diagonals into it and we've cut the side pieces. So then what we need to do is set these side pieces on both sides of this block and determine where will we drill that 3 8 inch hole for this 3 8 inch dowel. Where is it going to go through this material? When we select a spot that it'll go, then what we do is we go to the drill press, put both pieces, both of these pieces together, and drill through both of them simultaneously. When you've done that, you can take a piece of aluminum rod, I just happen to have this at home, cut it a, maybe a quarter inch wider than you need, and then take that aluminum rod, stick it in one hole, stick it in the other, and then set the side pieces right where they go on both sides, glue it and clamp it together. You're leaving a little bit of this aluminum rod sticking out on both sides and that's okay. So after the last step you will have something that looks like this only you're going to have this sticking out on both sides and this is still going to be a rectangle. Now you go back to the bandsaw and cut the profile right through this piece that you will need. Okay, You're going to go right around like that. Your diagonal is going to stay there because it's glued in. This is all glued in and I added a little bit of super glue here to lock it in place. You will get a piece of scrap material like this when you cut your diagonals. This is Babinga wood and I would not recommend it. It's super hard and the next step is going to be difficult because you're going to try to drill a hole and put this sleeve into the babinga. Now that was really hard to do. You can see I did it in fur and that was a lot easier. Softer, it grabs and it works pretty well but I wanted uh, that luxury of the hardwood showing. So after I did that you can see I got this sleeve, brass sleeve and I really had difficulty getting it in there but once I got it in there I put it against the belt sander and you can see I kind of smeared it a little bit but that doesn't matter and got it in there. Then I went back and I set this in there and decided exactly where I needed to notch that so that notch right there would fit into the dowel. After that's in place you can see what happens. This bolt goes down and pushes against the blade that's trapped in there and this becomes a teeter-totter and presses down on the blade down below and locks it in. 
So that's where we're headed. Now this, you can, you can actually go to Ace Hardware and purchase plastic handles with a nut that comes out. But what I did is I turned this on my lathe and you can see I use epoxy glue, two-part epoxy to glue that in and you can't see it from the top side and it looks pretty sharp. So let's go. After you have this side profile cut, then what you can do is set it down on a router table or you can put a router across it but I put it down on a router table and I just pulled it around the blade all the way around and I stopped rounding right about there on both sides so see I got a nice round edge from routering it and then it's some hand sanding and maybe a little bit of sanding with an orbital sander and uh, that's what you end up getting. I put uh, some urethane on this and then waxed it for getting that finish. Now we'll go ahead and assemble it and see how it works. Okay, let's uh, plane some wood with this little baby. And you can see we're getting a little bit of a cut there and the blade holder is holding and it's doing a pretty decent job. It probably looks a whole lot better than it works but I'm very proud of it and maybe you can make some observations of this and do a better job and um, show me a picture if you get a good one. I'd love to see it. Thank you for watching.